She's an award-winning YouTuber and best-selling author obsessed with helping you go after the life you want. I like it. Join her as she seeks out the stories and strategies. Give me every little detail. Of extraordinary people who found success. I'm going to get emotional. Oh, my God. Welcome to Detail Therapy with Amy Landino. The most important thing that you can do is feed your body good whole foods and enough of them. It doesn't matter when you eat. And so the great thing about intermittent fasting is you can have a lot of other health benefits outside of weight loss, um, but it removes that when you remove breakfast, it removes that like stress of, I have to feed the kids, at least for me personally, I have to feed the kids, I have to feed the dog, I gotta, you know, pack the lunches, whatever. Like it's one less thing to do. And when you train your body, it's gonna take you a week and then you're good to go and you're not even gonna think about it. Like I do not miss it at all. Good morning, good life. Welcome back to Detail Therapy. You just heard a little bit of my conversation with Whitney Abraham. In this episode, we're going to be talking about intermittent fasting. Whitney is an expert on the topic and we're gonna be talking about balancing your nutrition, what tools to use and how flexible to be with yourself if you would like to give this strategy a go. Starting your day on your terms, even as a busy mom, Whitney offers a little bit of perspective as a mom. And even with little ones to care for, it can be tough to set yourself up for success in the morning. Whitney's got a few tips for you to take that time back, but also make sure your kids are good to go. And a little bit of a bonus. What was I like in high school? Well, Whitney and I have known each other since then, so she's going to spill a few of those details. We have a lot to get into today, but for those of you who are are new to the show. My name is Amy Landino and I will be your host. I'm a YouTube creator, podcaster, business coach, public speaker, and best-selling author. I'm here to help you go after the life you want. You can find out more details about me by visiting youtube.com slash amytv. I am just riding the high. We are coming in strong. This episode was really, really good. I'm so pumped for you to hear it. But it's like we're getting ready to end this season of detailed therapy, which is sad and exciting all at the same time. I just had a new book come out, Good Morning, Good Life. It's a huge success on Amazon and that's all because of people like you for picking it up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Also for your feedback on the episode last week with Vincenzo, I really appreciate it. It's so nice to hear everybody going, oh my gosh, we finally get to hear from the husband. I know, right? I haven't had him on the show yet, so that was really, really fun. But if you wanna find out what I have just been exhausting all efforts over besides podcasts, besides the YouTube channel. That's all at goodmorninggoodlife.com or if you search for Good Morning Good Life on Amazon. The book is there and also the planner and also audiobook is on its way, my podcasting friends. Um, I'm recording this and technically I cannot say the audiobook is out, but I have a feeling it's going to be maybe the same day that you hear this or maybe very, very soon after. So I just, I can't say for sure yet. So I'm not going to say for sure yet, but feel free to check around because last I heard it was on its way. I am so excited about this episode and even more excited about the partner for this episode of Detail Therapy. And that's our friends at Four Sigmatic. I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about them later in the show so you can learn how you can get 15% off my favorite mushroom elixir company. That's at foursigmatic.com com slash detail therapy for more details now if you just can't wait f-o-u-r-s-i-g-m-a-t-i-c dot com slash detail therapy all right I do not want to waste a lot of time this is a particular subject in um, nutrition and I hate to use the word diet but if we think about what the true definition of the word diet is it's a very appropriate word um, I'm very passionate about this. In 2015, I actually went on just sort of like a generic detox to lose a little bit of weight. I ended up losing about 15 pounds. And then I maintained that weight loss with intermittent fasting. And it has been one of my favorite ways to stay on point, keep my nutrition and my health very uh, at a very good level, at a very optimal level, specifically for efficiency and productivity. We can't have the carbs weighing us down and we don't need to eat all single Single hours of the day. That's my point of view. And so I actually hadn't sat down with somebody who was a true professional in the area. And I'm very excited that I got to call on Whitney to share this with you today. Even more so, 
uh, because I know Whitney from back in the day. We went to high school together, and now we are just living it up in our female entrepreneur world. Like, hey, girl, how, what a way to come back together and and catch up and all the things. And so um, I don't want to waste any time. I think this is going to be valuable, especially for those of you who are eating those sugar cookies. <laughs> yes, it's that time of year, is it not? <laughs> yes, it is. There's cookies all over the office, aren't they? When do they disappear? Well, we have a small role in that, but I would like you to entertain a couple of ideas as you think about balancing that diet, especially going into a new year. We're all thinking about it going into a new year. So let's get into it with my next guest. Whitney Abraham is a premier certified faster way to fat loss coach and business coach whose mission is to help busy women get their minds, bodies, and businesses up and running and thriving. She's worked with thousands of clients to help them master their metabolism through intermittent fasting and carb cycling. In her free time, she works with other female entrepreneurs to help them capture their confidence and scale their online businesses. Whitney, let's get into it. Whitney Abraham, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Why do you do what you do? Because I really, really believe in helping women, busy women, get their minds, bodies, and businesses up and running and thriving. And that starts with taking care of your body. How did you get into this? You, you educate on specifically intermittent fasting, which is exactly why I wanted you to come on. But secretly, I've been trying to come up with something because we've been friends for a while and I want to talk about that too. Mm -hmm. But how did you actually get into this? Because it's... it's it's definitely hot right now. So, but I don't think it's a fad. I think we're starting to see a shift in how people think about what they eat. And a lot of it has to do with time constraints. Right. For sure. You know, like you mentioned, intermittent fasting is certainly something that's been happening for centuries, whether it's for medical practice or, um, you know, when people are sick, they say the best thing to do is to fast and give your body time to rest. So today people are recognizing that by introducing intermittent fasting into their schedule, they can stave off long-term illnesses like Alzheimer's and cancer. They can create a situation where their body's burning more fat. So if they're potentially trying to lose weight, it's really valuable for that. Um, but most importantly, I find it to be freeing because when you are not freaking out about what you're going to eat and when you're going to eat it all the time, that is freedom. It really is. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, like I just get overwhelmed thinking like, oh gosh, me and the husband have to eat tonight like that. I guess I'm in charge. I got to figure out what we're going to eat or am I going to. And I've been ordering a lot of food to come to the house. So that's fine. But to start the day when, you know, everyone knows I'm like a stickler about my morning routines and there's so many things I want to do to make time to meal plan to have to worry about breakfast is annoying to me. But I know it's also like really weird to get to that point. Most people wake up and they're like, I'm hungry. It's time to eat. And it, that's just something we've been taught for a long time. Right. Like, What are we learning about that now that might mean that eating breakfast is kind of the myth that we've been taught is the un, um, the unmissed meal of the day? Yeah. I mean, you've heard from the time that you were a small child, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And that's absolutely not the case. That's actually a marketing strategy that was put together by cereal companies. Mm. And they nailed it. They knocked it out of the park. But quite frankly, the most important thing that you can do is feed your body good whole foods and enough of them. It doesn't matter when you eat. And so the great thing about intermittent fasting is you can have a lot of other health benefits outside of weight loss. Um, but it removes that when you remove breakfast, it removes that like stress of I have to feed the kids, at least for me personally, I have to feed the kids, I have to feed the dog, I got to, you know, pack the lunches, whatever. Like it's one less thing to do. And when you train your body, it's going to take you a week and then you're good to go and you're not even going to think about it. Like I do not miss it at all. How did you discover this actual practice of intermittent fasting in your own life? So I started the faster way when I was um, postpartum with my second child. Is that like someone's formal program around yes. it or is that what it's officially called? Yes, it's called know. the faster way to fat loss. Okay. It is um, an intermittent fasting, carb cycling and intentional exercise plan. So it's an online program where people are taught the principles on how to track their macros and intermittent fasting and all of those great things. Um, and they go through with a coach. So I went through it as a client uh, right after I had my second kiddo because I was home with them and I was exhausted and quite frankly, I wasn't even really worried about losing postpartum weight. I was worried about the fact that I kept telling my children not right now. And mm. that is really hard for women to reckon with when they just don't have the energy to do the life that they need to do, they want to do. Mm. So I went through the program as a client and I felt immediately better. My energy skyrocketed. I was eating more food than I had eaten in my life, but it was real food. 
And I understood why I was eating the certain things that I was. And I understood how to fuel my body. Um, so after I went through it a couple of times, I found myself telling a lot of people in my community about it because I was so passionate about what it had done for me. And then I um, was invited to get certified. So there are only 1,700 coaches. Um, so I was invited to get certified. I went through the program, got certified. And now I work with thousands of women to help them do exactly the same thing. That's so amazing. I know what you're saying about the, I think this is part of the stress of, for me in particular, about eating in the morning. I can, you know, after you eat, you eat food. Your body is different now. You have now like nourished it. I genuinely feel slower mm -hmm. and like ready to take a nap mm -hmm. depending on what food I ate or how much I ate and probably the quality of that food. But after eating breakfast, let's say it's a cereal, right? Like I, I'm not even thinking at the same level. And I think that was the most eye-opening thing for me. And I'll kind of like tell you a little bit of how, of how I discovered it. But when I wasn't eating until a little bit later when my body was like, okay, now it's really time that you need some fuel. I was thinking so much more clearly to start the day. That mental clarity is a real benefit of intermittent fasting. So I will find that I like to do my really thoughtful work in the morning while I'm fasted. Mm -hmm. So things that require a lot of mental clarity for me. Um, and you know, I'm like a humongous morning person and routine person too. So we certainly align on that. And so I will schedule the things in my day that require extreme focus early because it's true after you eat your mental clarity does go down your body is focused on digesting food so here's the cool thing you're either in a fed state or a fasted state when you're fasted your body is doing all sorts of cool things like eliminating cells dead cells from your body it is focused on repairing parts of the body that need attention when you put food in your body it stops all the other processes and it focuses on digesting food and storing that food as fuel for your body. Mm -hmm. So that's why your mental clarity goes down because your, your brain is not functioning and focusing on what you're supposed to be thinking about. It's worried about digesting the food and yeah. storing the fuel. That's so interesting. So I'll just say, just because this leads into another question that I have. When I discovered it, I had already done some kind of like weird detox thing because I was about to go to the Philippines to speak. And I was going to be around my colleagues and like potential clients on a beach on an island basically for, for a week. Tight. I'm like, okay, we gotta lose a couple LBs. <laughs> so I did that. But it wasn't until I was actually there that I had learned from a couple of other people about intermittent fasting and they were telling me, and I was like this, very interested because I was thinking, I just did a kind of a detox. How am I gonna actually maintain this? Mm -hmm. And so I started to learn about it. I don't know. I mean, in that situation, I'm not getting all the details. I'm just getting enough. And I was getting enough in the sense that it was like, oh, eat from 11 to 7 and not outside of that window. I like rules. That's easy for me to understand. That's not like macros and carbs and this and that and what's the right. I'll just do that. So for me, it was just the time constraint aspect of it mm -hmm. that I took on. And, and it not only kept the weight off, I think I lost a little bit more. And the funny thing is that 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 isn't even the whole story. I didn't really change my diet. Mm -hmm. I was only restricting the times that I was eating. So like from that perspective, like is there pluses and minuses? Like can you expand on other than the time constraint, what intermittent fasting also looks like and what the benefits of doing both are versus just the time restraint? Exactly. So, I mean, there are lots of different forms of intermittent fasting. And so the one that you and I are most familiar with and the one that I use with my clients is the 16-8 protocol, meaning that you eat all of your food in an eight-hour window, 11 to 7, like you were saying, but you can decide any window you want. And then you fast for 16 hours. Now, some people will do a 5-2 split, which is where they have two days a week and they restrict their calories to under 500 on those days and they eat like they normally would the rest of the days. Some people introduce 24-hour fasts, like you were talking about a 48-hour fast. So, those are certainly much more intermediate or pro level intermittent fasting strategies for the common person that's thinking, I want to try this and see how, it, how I feel, how my body responds. A 16, eight protocol is going to be the best thing for you. Um, but the benefits outside of, of course, maintaining weight or even having weight loss are that mental clarity are that increased energy. Um, your body just getting in a great rhythm where it's, operating with full metabolism and it's doing what it needs to be doing. Mm -hmm. The five, two is always so interesting to me, but I feel like, I don't know. I do feel like that's that. Yeah. I feel like that's so, it's so much easier for me. It just depends on the type of person. I think you are how you hold yourself accountable, but the 
five two is like, oh, I feel like that's advanced. Or it's like you got to your goal, so now you're just doing something to kind of maintain it. But like only eating 500 calories twice a week and then being able to do anything you want on the other ones. Like to me, it's much easier to just go, I eat from 11 to 7. And quite frankly, I think a 5-2 would be less effective unless you were diligent about tracking because it requires you to know how much you're taking in on every single day. And quite frankly, why would you treat your body like a temple and give it 500 calories of like lean protein and veggies and clean fats two days a week? But then five days a week, just like treat it like a frat house. I totally agree. I And it seems like more of like a fad when you do it that way or that it's like um, you, you just have to. It, it sounds more like a diet mm -hmm. that way versus 16 and eight being the lifestyle change. Exactly. And I want my clients to be successful, which is why they're they're looking to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, every day we're going to have an eating window. If we need to tweak it here and there. Great. Not a problem. But like, I don't need to make this more complicated for you. You don't need to make this more complicated for yourself, right? Yeah. So when somebody starts, they're like, okay, this sounds really cool. Like, I think I need to figure out if it's for me or not. What is that? What is like the the getting started period look like? Like when you talk to somebody, and I don't know ex how you work is probably more high level than this, but if you were actually one on one coaching with somebody, um, what what exactly is the process they go through to start? So I would tell you baby steps. I would say just extend when you would normally eat your breakfast by a half hour or an hour every day. At the end of the week, we're going to get you to 16 hours. I also want you to listen to your body. So if you find yourself ravenous or lightheaded, hey, sis, eat. Like, <laughs> don't be a martyr. You don't lose the game of life if you can't intermittent fast for 16 hours. Take your time, right? You can have black coffee. You can have water. You can have electrolyte water. You can have some teas. Um, if you're the kind of person that wants to put a splash of something in your coffee, I will work with you to sort of taper and give you some alternatives to help you keep you in a fasted state mm -hmm. uh, to do that. So it doesn't have to sound so rigid and black and white. You can take your time working up to that 16 hours. Yeah. And what I think would be interesting um, is maybe using like a tool and maybe you can recommend one to kind of see what you're already doing just mm -hmm. to set your baseline. So if you're like, okay, well, turns out I'm at around 12 hours right now that I typically fast without thinking about it. Can you get to 13? Can you get to 14? And it's funny because now I feel like 14 is like without thought for me, mm -hmm. but there'll be days where I haven't been sticking to it, that it's like 14 is good. And then I'm like real hungry at 14. Mm -hmm. So I can't get to 16. I think it would be good to kind of like measure. Mm -hmm. Is there like an app for this that we can? So my clients use my fitness pal and there are lots of different um, tools on the marketplace, free apps that you can use certainly. But for me, I'm having my clients focus on not only what times they're eating, but like what they're putting in their body. I want you to learn what foods are what I want you to learn what a carb is. I want you to learn what a protein is. So that way you know how to fuel your body appropriately. So that's why I like my fitness pal because it's all in one spot. Yeah, that's true. I mean, definitely they say when you start journaling your food, mm -hmm. you really think differently about how much you're actually eating. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of get really specific about something you just breezed over a little bit ago about what you can have in a fasted state? Mm -hmm. So what are some of those things that are technically not breaking the fast or maybe kind of towing the line, but you're still better off than, than otherwise? This is, again, life is a gray area. And so some people are going to tell you you're fasted, you have nothing but water. And some people are going to say, hey, listen, like you're, in, you're not going to get an insulin response w under a certain caloric amount, right? So for us, we work with our clients to say, as long as it's under 50 calories and it's liquid, it's not, it has no fiber and it's not going to um, elicit an insulin response, you're okay. So that might be a dash of a non-dairy creamer, or if you really need the cow, just a little bit, what it needs to be under 50 calories. Mm -hmm. um, no sugar though, sis. Mm -hmm. That's the, I mean, because that's kicker. literally, yeah. But it, stevia. We're avoiding interesting stevia. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. So in, in very small doses, stevia is fine. So if you're the kind of person that's had like loaded up coffee before, and you're just really trying to figure out a way to clean it up, yeah. that's the best thing you can do a little bit of stevia and then just taper down on whatever it is that you put in it. I like a nut pods or something. I mean, I drink my coffee black, but I recommend that to my clients, just something to clean it up a little bit. Um, yeah, that's actually kind of like a huge detail. I I feel like I got really lucky when I discovered time-restricted eating that I had already switched to drinking black coffee. So that might be some people's first step is starting to understand what it means to pull back on some of those ingredients and be like drinking coffee again, not sugar with a little bit of coffee in it. <laughs> people get more mad at me when I start talking to them about how they can and can't have their coffee than they do when I'm talking about alcohol. Uh, They're yeah. like, uh, whoa, whoa, what'd you say about my coffee, the queen? <laughs> 
no. It's like, hold on. But guess what? Good news. You can have that latte mm-hmm. when it's 11. Amen. I mean, like, go after it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get so excited about having my chai, but it's like, okay, I gotta wait on the chai. <laughs> I gotta get closer to lunch. Um, but yeah, I've actually heard that you can um, just, I guess it's kind of hard to explain. I thought it was crazy, but there's like, Putting butter in your coffee mm-hmm. would be okay, technically. This, a certain amount and a certain, obviously, like grass-fed and all that happy stuff, like making sure it's good butter. But if you really need something in your coffee but really also want to stay in a – some people would argue not at all fasted, but somewhat fasted state. So it depends on who you're talking to. And certainly there's like the bulletproof contention out there that swears by a bulletproof coffee in the morning. I have them certain days of the week, but not in the morning because the caloric amount is higher. Mm. I mean, when you're putting a tablespoon of butter and that's hundred calories, so you're bumping up above that. But the thing is your body's insulin response is much more muted with that because it's not, you know, it's not sugar that's spiking your response. So It depends on who you're talking to. For the purposes of my clients, I tell them to try and keep it under 50 calories, but there are a huge contingent of intermittent fasters that love to have a bulletproof in the morning. Yeah. Okay. So I always have to kind of qualify what I'm talking about on the podcast when it comes to morning people, non-morning people. Mm -hmm. I think um, 11 to 7 is like that blanket. It's become sort of the, uh, the, the typical advice in terms of intermittent fasting. But I would also think that night people would have a harder time with fasting because of, you know, stopping eating at 7 p.m. If you're staying up kind of late on a typical basis, it would be difficult. Can you give some advice to those people that are like, this is so far-fetched for me mm-hmm. because so, of my lifestyle? All right. Before we get into that, this episode of Detail Therapy is brought to you by Four Sigmatic. If you've never heard of Four Sigmatic, it's my favorite mushroom company. They make fabulous elixirs such as a coffee. And I know you know I love the coffee, okay? Four Sigmatic believes in the real magic of functional mushrooms like reishi, chaga, cordyceps, and lion's mane, as well as other superfoods to help us live healthier, more advanced lives. All of their products are organic, vegan, gluten-free, and instant. This is so important because you know what? We're going to have that cup of coffee or we're going to have that other drink that we can get some more benefits poured into it. And Four Sigmatic makes the perfect product for whatever that is for you so that you can also make the most of these other benefits, specifically benefits that mushrooms throw our way. And also not worry about where the product's coming from and whether or not it's sustainable and all of those other health issues that we need to be thinking about these days. This is one of my favorite coffees to drink, specifically when I'm trying to get much more focused. I like to drink the coffee with lion's mane. And this is just, again, a hyper-focused, high-productivity drink that I try to have on a regular basis, specifically if I think that maybe my diet has been suffering a little bit and I need to reel it in and not let my gut decide how efficient I'm going to be that day. Um, But there's definitely some other great products as well, specifically if you're looking for something that's going to help you before you go to the gym to really energize you and make you get to your most optimal level of working out for the time that you have outlined to work out. I don't know about you, but I got 30 minutes blocked on my calendar for a workout. I do something on an app. I bust it out in 30 minutes and I need to work hard for that 30 minutes because I don't want to do it longer than that. And I love Four Sigmatic for finding the right option to prep me for that workout. So I'd love for you to get 15% off, save some money on your first orders at foursigmatic.com slash detail therapy. That's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com slash D-E-T-A-I-L-T-H-E-R-A-P-Y. Foursigmatic.com slash detail therapy. Check that out. The link will be in the show notes. And now back to my conversation with Whitney. Here's the thing. I don't care when your eight hour window is. I mean, is it bad for you to eat at midnight? Yeah. <laughs> but are you staying up until four? Oh, all right. I, You know, if, I, if I'm telling you like in the best interest of your health, get a good eight hours of sleep, go to bed when your REM cycles kick in like 10, 10 to midnight, like you need to be sleeping during that window. But hey, Some people are night owls. My mother-in-law, that girl's not in bed before 2 a.m., just not. So, And she's done the program with me, and she's loved it. So here's what you have to do. You have to decide the eight-hour window that works for your life. Is that one to nine? Is it 12 to eight? I'm much more of a 12 to eight than an 11 to seven girl. Some people, I have clients that are night nurses, and they pick, you know, crazy schedules. I mean, I have some people that pick morning. Like, they'll eat when they get up, and they'll stop 
midway through the day and they don't eat later on at night. So it just kind of depends on you, your lifestyle and where you are. Love that. I love that. So, um, I just, I, I'm just a believer in this. I just wonder if it's coming off more like a diet and not like a lifestyle. Do you think that this is something that people like in theory should be doing super long term, or is it, um, you're doing it for a short period of time to make the difference and then you're shifting to something else. Like, is it feasible to do this long term? Absolutely. And you should, if you are open to that kind of a lifestyle, you know, again, I mentioned briefly beforehand, the long-term benefits of intermittent fasting, staving off Alzheimer's disease. My husband has Alzheimer's both immediately. His dad has Alzheimer's and his maternal grandmother mm -hmm. had it. It's on immediate sides of both of his family. We are so cognizant of how we fuel and how we take care of our bodies to stave off long-term disease. Cancer, there is so much research that's showing whenever you implement intermittent fasting long-term in your diet, it helps stave off all of these potential issues. So yes, absolutely. I think it's a lifestyle. I have no issue saying I will intermittent fast forever. There's no drawback. You're not going to screw up your metabolism by introducing intermittent fasting long term. That's not a thing. So long as you are giving your body enough food, you will not have any negative impacts from doing that long term. I think that's probably the biggest trip up is, is it's so much easier to get your calories in that you go over when you're eating all day long. But then when you're given a much shorter window and it's like, okay, did you get your whatever it is, whatever your situation is, 1500 calories mm -hmm. or something. Um, did you get to it by seven o'clock or by eight o'clock? And you're like, oh my gosh, like, and you're like trying to cram whatever that is in. I just, I, I, I hope that you're right because I love it. And I think at minimum, this is at least the opportunity for people to become more aware. If it does nothing else for you, hopefully it does allow your body more time to process food. That's really the big goal there. That's 16 hours. But if nothing else, you're so much more aware that you are eating mm -hmm. because you are trying to keep yourself from it for those periods of time that you do look at food differently, I think just naturally. Mm -hmm. And I would tell anybody listening that's considering intermittent fasting, I would encourage you to track your food anyway for a couple of weeks as you're onboarding to make sure that you're getting enough calories because the one way that it could backfire for you is if you implement intermittent fasting, but you're eating less than 1200 calories a day. And that's, listen, a lot of women do because they've been told to do that. And I'm not here to, you know, stand on that cross today, but you have to give your body enough fuel. And so if you don't, that will slow your metabolism and intermittent fasting cannot compete with that. Mm. So that's why I would like for people to track what they're eating while they're implementing this so they can just make sure my body's getting enough of the the nutrients that it needs. Yeah. So you're not you're not skipping any steps here. Just like mm -hmm. any other maybe program that you would do, you're gonna try to be tracking things and making sure you're getting the right nourishment. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's not a diet necessarily. Right. You know, you can you when you have a deficit of calories, clearly like that that's a weight loss plan. That's a math problem. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean like oh, I'm gonna restrict my time and I'm not gonna get enough food. You're gonna completely change what your body is setting out to do when and you you're, do that. You're not gonna have the benefits of intermittent fasting. If you don't get enough, you're not going to have mental clarity because your body needs fuel. Hungry, you're not yeah. going to get the energy boost because your body needs fuel, right? Mm. So the way that intermittent fasting works successfully is when we know that you have enough food in your system to sustain you during that 16 hour fast. Love that. Where can people get more details? Because I think everyone's going to have that different calorie intake they need during that eight hour period or whatever period of time that they find that suits them. Mm -hmm. I know there's like a 20 and four too. like some there, there's like the four hour a day window, mm -hmm. which is so crazy. If you think about eating 1500 calories in a four hour window, like yeah. that's a lot. But how exactly can somebody get started like going toward a resource that would give them direction on what their situation is, what their goals are, and what the actual calorie count would be for them if they were to go toward intermittent fasting, because they still need that information mm -hmm. with the time restriction. So two options for you. Number one, you can download MyFitnessPal. It's a free app. You can put in your current weight and your goal weight, how quickly you want to lose that weight, if you're losing or gain, if you're trying to gain or maintain. And then it's going to give you a baseline caloric amount. Now, this is by no means going to be perfect, but it is a ballpark for you to start. Mm. And that way you can at least know, oh, I'm really missing the mark or I'm getting close. The other option, of course, is to work with a coach. You can work with, uh, there are a plethora of people who do this kind of work on the internet, myself included. Um, but you can work with somebody who can help you figure out specifically what your body needs to either be at that slight calorie deficit that helps you or whatever your own personal goals are. Love that. 
All right. Well, that's just something I've been wanting to have on the show for so long. And I was so excited to hear that you were specializing in this. Oh, yeah. I didn't even talk about how we know each other. So we went to high school together. Sure did. And what's so funny is I, you're a little bit younger than me. So we weren't in the same class, but we ended up being in choir together. <laughs> and this is where like we kind of a little bit got to know each other. But we it's not that we were super close friends or anything, but I just remember you so vividly in high school because there was just something you were just smiling all the time and I was just like this girl is happy how is she so happy we're in high school but like I just want you to know that like you were kind of one of those people that you look at in school when I'm definitely trying to get the heck out when I'm in school like I'm done you know when I was in high school I was ready to leave like as soon as we got there but you kind of gave me hope that like sometimes school was okay and because you were just had this huge smile on your face had friends around you all the time and I honestly it was like it was admirable I really enjoyed being around you even just for choir class that one year (laughs) I love you for thinking that do you want to know what I thought of you when I saw you uh no I thought you were (laughs) fierce Like girl meant business. She, if you think she means business now, she meant business probably from the day that she entered the planet, but you always had this look on your face. Like I'm going to nail whatever it is that I'm doing. Like determined look on your face every single time. I appreciate that. I think I'm glad you met me in choir because (laughs) the soft space, because I think that was one. And we were talking about the phrase capture confidence before this. Mm -hmm. That was one that was, um, I had this like weird ability to sing. And that was the one place where I could go into class and I felt pretty confident that I'd be able to get done what needed to get done. You know, what what tone are we singing in? What song are we singing? And I and I can deliver on that. So, yeah, I think I kind of came in like, OK, at least I got this class. You locked nailed up. it, Queen. You nailed it. <laughs> Thank you. OK, now I want to get into the details of your day. Mm-hmm. Can you walk me through a typical morning routine? Absolutely. So I get up, I get my kids ready and off to school. I immediately exercise once they're out of the house. And then we'll pour my cup of coffee, I'll triage on my big three for the day, what needs to get accomplished. And then I time, I block schedule. So in the morning, I'm creating video content. After that, I'm doing written content. It's all blocked out for myself, similar, similar to the way you live your life. So that way I can take meetings in the afternoon, spend a little bit of time on self-care. You know, I got a very strict hair mm. and nail and brow and Relatable. lash routine, girl. <laughs> it's a routine. So um, I'm very, very organized in that way. So how is it when you wake up? Because I obviously don't have kids. Like when you wake up, do you, um, is it like you're, you're, you've got them with you like right away in terms of like they've got your attention and you just lock in on them until you can make time for yourself? Like how do you handle that balance with starting your day on your terms, but also being a mom at the same time? So I used to get up before they got up in the morning to exercise before they were in full-time childcare. And now that I have the freedom to spend my daytime hours the way I want to, I don't have to be up as early. Mm. Um, but the way that it works for our family is just a very, it's a very happy way to wake up when they're the first thing that I see. Mm -hmm. Um, of course I have my own sort of mental things that I'm going through as my eyes open my gratitude practice. I don't write the way that you do, but I do kind of think of three things that I'm really grateful for. And I also set my intention for the day. So how do I want to show up for my kids? How do I want to show up for my business? How do I want to show up for my community? And I will use that to root myself throughout the day. But that's all sort of happening in my mind as I'm moving and getting them out of bed. And uh, we have like a new thing that's happening in our house. My daughter's in her big girl bed. And she now is getting out of her big girl bed when she knows it's okay. And she's going to get her brother out of her crib, his crib. And then they come together into mommy and daddy's room. And it's like the cutest entrance of like (sighs) tiny toddlers ever. So that's joyful. And I like, I'm trying to hold on to this very short season before they totally lose it and start to yeah. like come in at inappropriate times. I love that because mm-hmm. it's like you're taking that in so much stride. And instead of the stress of like they're coming into my space, it's an intentional. We know this is going to happen. Mm-hmm. They're coming into my space. We're going to teach them how to wake up on their terms, mm-hmm. too, and make that important. And, you know, go and get your brother. I love that. I mm-hmm. think that's so this is a, these are the things I think about just in case my life takes a <laughs> takes an interesting turn. What's your uh, what's your workout? regimen like yep so I mentioned intentional exercise before so on a couple of days a week I will do sprint training so and this is all part of the program but for me I hate just cardio so I would prefer like a hit based focus for those couple of days a week and then at the other days of the week I weight train 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how many days a week are you working out then technically? Five. Five. Okay. And sometimes I'll throw in like an active recovery day if I want to do a yoga or a Pilates or something like that. But baseline is five. Okay. And cool. you should feel totally okay. Everyone in the world feel totally okay with it not being seven days a week. Yo, your body needs rest. I know for sure. It's the same thing as like your body processing food in those off hours, right? You're you're giving it time to rest and yeah. the, the muscles really do need that time. Yes. And even five, like if that's not feasible for somebody, you could be doing three to four days a week and it's better than nothing. Girl, if you did one. Yeah, for real. Yeah. For real. I love that. What do you how do you get direction for like your weight training? Do you just know what to do or do you have like a guide or anything like that? So in the program we have fitness professionals that create the workouts for us. Um, now that I'm certified, I know what I need to do as far as weight size. And Mm -hmm. I, of course, coach my clients on that. But to start, I didn't know where to start. I just, I had to ask somebody like, okay, well, how heavy is heavy? Mm. Like, what, what am I supposed to be lifting? And so that, that bit of education was helpful. Yeah. That's, that's always been my like biggest issue. It's like, I appreciate hit workout. Cause I'm like, I feel like I don't need a whole lot of equipment mm-hmm. so I can just kind of do the thing. Um, but yeah, weight training, it's just, it's just so intimidating to me. So I always need something kind of coaching me or someone coaching mm-hmm. me through it. Mm-hmm. What do you typically do for self care? Well, girl, we mentioned it before, but <laughs> <laughs> this queen is on a regimen. Like <laughs> I get a once a week blowout that lasts me the week. I get my lash extensions done. I love that. First of all, the fact that you have a blowout that lasts you a week. I wish I lived that life. You've got, you've got thick hair, girl. Dude, and it took me a while to get to this place. But like me, dry shampoo and that chick at the blowout bar, we got this on lock. <laughs> yeah. Perfect little family right there. Mm-hmm. Love that. So um, I gave up eyelash extensions, just so you know. And so talk to me about that. I will. First of all, a little pricey. It got a little pricey. I was like, you know what? And I also sleep on my stomach. Mm. So I realized I was taking it down. I was was totally sabotaging my investment. What I discovered, though, was lash serum with Mm -hmm. the lift. When you go get that lash perm, I get compliments like never before. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what? But I think that the extensions are great when it's like, we. I did it before we went to Italy. Like it was like, that's totally a good time to do it. When you got like a big thing going on. A big thing going on. It's just, I feel like my life is a whole big thing. So I'm just trying to rock into (laughs) it. I respect that. I love that. (laughs) So yeah, that the manicure, I mean, literally it's like a cycle. Every day there's some kind of self-care something, but you know what that does for me? It allows me in the morning to be able to go out the door and look like a glam squad hit me in five minutes. Mm -hmm. And that's a game changer to feel confident in the way that I look without having to put in a whole lot of daily effort. Yeah. And and just to speak on that, I totally identify with it. Most importantly, because it's focusing on the things that make me feel more confident in myself. And that's what confidence really is. It's not what other people think when they're looking at you. It's not other people going like, are those lash extensions? It's just you looking at, like I can wake up and walk out the door. And that's what, that's what getting microblade on my eyebrows did for me. Mm-hmm. And we did a show on microblading because I was so passionate about it. People think I have makeup on when I don't have makeup on because I have brows that are defining my face. Amen. So it's just little things like that, that make me feel better when I just look at myself in the mirror and go, look, I just got to go to the grocery store. Like, let's get this over with. I don't need to go put things on. It's not about anybody else. It's about what makes you feel like powerful. What Mm. makes you feel ready to attack the day. Amen. Totally agree. What do you do to stay organized? So you said you're a time batcher, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. So like, what does your calendar look like? Is it digital? Is it paper? Like, what are the things that keep you on track to get you most done with your things for the day? So I'm running multiple calendars. So of course, my digital calendar is any meetings that I need to remember, and then the activity that needs to happen throughout the day. But then I'll keep content calendars that are paper, right? Mm. So that way, it's not cluttering up what's happening with my like day to day function. So I know that in a separate written place, I have a spot where all the content that I'm creating is going, and then all of my meetings, family things, time blocking, it's all on the on the digital counter. I love that. Who inspires you when it comes to style? Mm. I mean, I feel like I'm the most unstylish human being. <laughs> I disagree. In the world. Uh, I'm a jeans and tea kind of chick. So like, you know what? There's a girlfriend of mine. Her name is Megan Caffarelli. She's a local mom blogger. Uh, her blog is a, a Pieces of Mom Life. She's so cute. Everything she does is like you could bend over and pick kids up in. And that's my jam. Oh, yeah. See, mm-hmm. I'm, I love that. I, li- I don't have kids and I still I have to bend over and pick up my dog all the time. So mm. that's totally relatable. Nobody needs to see your butt crack. I, no, no, nobody. Literally nobody. <laughs> I'm not even I don't even want to know what's happening. <laughs> um, is there any uh, are you a big reader? I'm a huge reader. So to any books that come to mind for you when it comes to mindset shift, like something that really made the difference for you. Brendan Burchard's book 
high performance habits is so next level. Like if you're trying to up your game, mm. you best get that book. Yeah, it's a very good book. Mm -hmm. that's, I can't recommend that one enough either. I'm mm -hmm. glad you said that one. I don't know if that's been said yet on the show. I love yeah. that. Um, how have you struggled with work-life balance? Is that something that's been a thing for you? Now you're, you, um, I also knew you when you were working in other situations, but mm -hmm. like now that you're self-employed, is it harder? Is it easier? Like what's going on? I don't believe in balance. I believe in you finding whatever equilibrium feels best for you. So like my balance and, you know, Sally next door's balance are different. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it's hard for us to just promote some idea of, Find balance. Like, no, if you want to work 75% of the time and spend 25% with your kids, preach queen. If you want to spend all of your time with your kids, good on you. Like for me, just listening to my own mental state as I was figuring out and transitioning into self-employment, like, okay, my kids are home this many hours a week and I feel frazzled. Would I feel less frazzled if I had more childcare? The answer is absolutely. Mm. So, you know, it took us a couple of months to get to that place of tweaking and just adding more help a little bit at a time, but asking for help from my partner and from my family and hiring out help where it was appropriate was like the most important thing that I could do for myself as an entrepreneur and as a woman who just deserves to be fulfilled. Love that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just think you're so much fun. Okay, everybody, you have to check out Whitney online. Whitney, where can they um, follow you or mm -hmm. check your website? All those details. You can find me on the internet. On Instagram, it's Whitney Abraham, or my website is WhitneyAbraham.com. Awesome. Well, in just a couple of minutes, I'd like to challenge you to the secret show if you're up for it. Ooh, snap. <laughs> You guys can check that out in Shine Squad. That's at patreon.com slash amytv. But before we do that, I need to ask you my final question. Mm -hmm. And that is, what does it mean to you to go after the life that you want? It means that I get the opportunity to help other people realize their potential without worry of what anyone else thinks about how I do it. Good answer. Thanks for being on the show, Whitney. Thanks for having me. All right, let's catch the details from this conversation. First, your habits depend on your lifestyle. Be flexible and give yourself time to learn what works best for you. I talk about this ad nauseum in my new book, on my YouTube channel, on this podcast. You do you, baby boo. Whatever is right for you, you've got to do the right thing. And so even with your diet, where there's a lot of different advice out in the world, you've got to find what works best for you. Recognize how you feel, not what the rest of the world is telling you. So figure out what that is and figure out what habits are going to stick based on how you do things. Next, set intentions for the day. Day, root yourself in some goals. It's really important to outline the things that you want to do and not make it too crazy. Make it a list that's potentially possible, but also a little bit of a reach. With setting those intentions, reminding yourself of those intentions, maybe doing some reflection on them in the mornings before you start the day. That's a great way to get the reminder of, hey, what is my goal for the day or what is the thing that's going to get me going today? so important to do. We can flounder throughout the day. The hours will pass and guess what? The sun will come up and go back down. And if you forget those intentions and you don't do anything to follow through with them, it's another day wasted. And I know you are not here to do that. Waste your days. Go after the life you want. Set the intentions for each day so that you can make that happen incrementally over time. And finally, focus on the things that make you feel the most confident. It's very easy to be scrolling the social webs and find the things that are making other people feel very confident, but those things should not make you feel less than and you need to focus on what's in you, what excites you, what makes you feel good. There are lots of things I don't like about myself, but there are lots of things I like and I try to remind myself of those things. If we never do that, we will never be content. We will never be happy. We will always always be striving for more. We will never feel we can sit in our wins. And that is not success. That is not happiness. You need to enjoy the journey. You need to enjoy how you got to where you are because you got there because you must have liked it a little bit. So if you want to make a change, respect what's happened in the past. It is not your future and focus on what makes you feel confident. What a good conversation. I will make sure to link to all of Whitney's details in the show notes. You've got to go check her out. She is a 
force to be reckoned with on Instagram. Such a great fireball of inspiration. So go check her out. And if you love getting more advice straight to your earbuds, I'd like to send you some simple steps for living your best life every day. And that's with my free audio training, the seven essential details for going after the life that you want. Receive this audiogram by subscribing to the podcast and take a screenshot that you did. Email that screenshot to hello at detailspodcast.com with audiogram, please, in the subject line. And we will get that right over to you. You can also listen to Whitney's secret podcast segment over in Shine Squad at patreon.com slash amytv. Because like I said, we have a new podcast for members every single day. And by every single day, I mean every weekday. You know, I got to get, I have a little bit of time on the weekends, right? It's just five to 10 minutes every morning, not just this podcast on Tuesdays. You can listen in Monday through Friday. So go check that out at patreon.com slash amytv. Link will be in the show notes. Don't forget to check the show notes for 15% off your order at Four Sigmatic. That's at foursigmatic.com slash detail therapy. I specifically like the coffee the best. Coffee with lion's mane. Get your focus on. I love this product for helping me be efficient. That's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. If you would like to discover even more actionable details, head over to Amy TV by visiting youtube.com slash Amy TV, or you can search for Amy TV in your YouTube app. Subscribe for good vibes, kiss the ones you love, and go after the life you want. Cheers.